Hey guys, I'm Maxi. I'm a Radiant player and coach, and I'm gonna break down how to pop off and ranked on Reyna. Oh my god, how many 4Ks can you get? In this video, we're going to be breaking down the decision making that led me to drop 35 picks with Reyna on Lotus. I know what a lot of you dummies might be thinking right now. Reyna mains don't think. Meh, 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 meh. Although that's true, there's a process of plays and decision making that can really elevate you from just an all aim, no brain Reyna, to that one man army Reyna that everybody loathes to play against. Since Reyna is the highest selected agent in Valorant, I thought maybe I could shed some light to help you guys be a little bit better when it comes to playing our favorite Latina queen. I still strongly believe that everybody deserves to go on their villain arc and Inslock Reyna to build some confidence in themselves. More specifically, play with the goal of improving your gun skill. Recently, I've been extremely washed since I haven't really been playing all that much recently. My aim is in the gutter and this game feels absolutely foreign to me at the moment. So to shake off the rust, I'm Inslocking Reyna till I feel like I can shoot back. So I hear a guy's footsteps behind me towards the stairs area while the other guy is completely unknown. Knowing where at least one of their guys is is valuable because that gives me something to go on. As I land, I use the loud thud of an audio cue to try to bait him. I hold for the swing on the dude who made noise because this dude is the only guy whose presence has been made known. So he's probably playing the part as a prime distraction. He does a funny little goofy troll and I whiff terribly, but I live to punish him for it. One enemy remaining. Nice. Oh my god, you are literally the best. Clutch. That's so ugly. As ugly as it was, I got the job done. This Astra peeks to catch me off guard when he hears me reloading, but his only mistake is that he missed one too many shots. I take him out full blind and suck him off for the health. After that, now I'm in a 1v1 where I have a general idea where the last guy is. Since time is ticking very low, I gotta commit to sticking half on the spike because that's the only way I will have a chance at winning the round. After I get half, that's a huge comfort to me because I just bought myself more time. He tries to juke me, but the map was against them and that gives me an easy 1v3 clutch. In all honesty, I had an extremely slow start this game, so I'm mostly skimming through the boring bits because it took me a bit to warm up. I was getting absolutely railed and my rear end pulverized by this very aggressive and confident team. You're hitting C. You should right. run. You deserve it. That pretty much sums up my defensive side. They were on point with their executes, utility, and trades, and we got ran through pretty hard, but that may be because their comp is better suited for attack. But so is ours. Something that you may notice is that their comp is really lacking heavy stalling potential. So going into this next side, I notice that they don't have a raise or a breach, so I plan on game planning to abuse that maliciously. Since the best I can do to stop us from taking this A side of the map is using an Astra Suck, I plan on attacking this side since it's going to be a major weak point for them. For my pistol buy on Reyna, I mostly always buy a Ghost and an extra orb. If you manage to heal yourself to 150 health on pistol round, you will be a literal tank. As you can see, my hunch was correct. We have Rubble and A main virtually for free with pretty much zero utility used on our part. So all that utility that we saved will be used to smash their site. Since I hear nothing towards A stairs yet, I push into the smoke to completely shut down this area to give my teammates security to funnel towards site. In what? I'm looking for heads here. My raise is a dive bomb agent, so I'm trusting that heal entry. What I mean by dive bomb agents is agents like Neon, Rays, and Jet, people that can get a lot of space really fast. So if those guys are in my team, I consider them the primary entry. But that doesn't mean I can't entry whenever I need to. Both flank, both flank, okay. Both flank, both flank. Is it? Are they? One enemy remaining. You took my ace. Shots. So the next round, I buy a Vandal because after those 4 picks from last round, I can happily afford a Vandal with full armor and 2 sucks. This round, I'm mostly just running around, keeping my gun out, just taking my time and challenging what I can because I hold a huge advantage. Just making sure I clear all my angles and steer clear from peeking too close around angles just in case if they got shorties. Right here I see my Rays fighting in pit and I shoot where I see them on minimap. 
I die, but it's okay because we win the round. The following round, I play a bit more of a lurking role because I want to see what's going on towards the seaside. I want to get a good idea on who's playing where, and I see a one way, so that tells me that they probably have a sturdier C hold than an A hold. The lurk leads nowhere, and we get shut down this round. Something that is of major note though is that the enemy jet pushed up middle and flanked my teammates and ended up with two picks. So with that in mind, I'm gonna try to kill this B guy. So since I'm under the assumption that these dudes like contesting C, I'm more than certain that they're in a 2-1-2 setup, meaning that they only have one dude on B. That gives me the confidence to hit B, especially since I hear the KJ's alarm bot go down. I push in my teammate's molly since I know it's not going to hit me for too hard to get a strong off angle. After taking that dude out, I heal myself, but healing myself leads a trail, so I pre-fire just in case any wise guy tries to trade me. I think two there. Ling, ling, bait, ling. Yeah. One enemy remaining. On the other side. I flash, I flash. Uh. I hear what I think is two people coming out of broken door. So as soon as my gecko is in a fight, I push to help him to trade him if he loses his gunfight, or if he wins it, back him up against a dude who's most likely going to try to swing and trade him. I get the trade on the gecko, but I hear myself getting pushed from two sides so I dismiss to reposition. Since I still have a leader in my inventory, I toss it and try to isolate a fight with the Reyna, and in trying to go for the ace, I whip out my pistol, but I'm lost and stupid and fat and die. This next round, as you can see, their money is very bad. So we go A main since we hold a massive advantage when it comes to range on this side of the map. They don't even have the Utah or firepower to stop us when they have good guns, so it's doubtful they'll have the artillery to stop us when they have bad guns. They will go. Blinded, blinded. Close, 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 two close. One tree, one tree, one tree. We're not close. One enemy remaining. Spike down A. Nice. We don't want to be too predictable, so we go C since they're bound to try to mediate their weaknesses. I've got your trail. Pretty sure they might be fighting A here. So my hunch was correct. They ended up tossing the whole barn towards A side, but we weren't there to meet them. Turns out we pretty much had a free C side and we won the round very smoothly. <laughs> This next round, we plan on hitting B with a Gecko ultimate, but it's a doozy and we end up getting shut down. Since we got shut down towards B, we go back to the tried and true A hit since I doubt they still have any answers for our aggression towards this side. I'm blind. Yeah. He's out, he's out, he's out. I'll flank with you. Guys are here. One enemy remaining. Nice. Do we want to try C again? The following round, we decided to hit C together. Personally, I would have preferred to keep hitting towards A, but whatever you do, as long as you do it as a team and coordinate it, it has a higher chance of working than you guys just being on different pages. As we're pushing though, this killjoy instantly ultimates a stall or push. Here, I'm gonna open this B door, watch out. He's here, he's here! Oh my god. My ult's ready. Oh, one more. Two there, two there, two there. One bot? Nice. One right, one close. They reload. Close, 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 close. He has a gun, he has a gun. Has close. A gun. We could just go. Let's just go A. The second we confirm both of these guys there, I make the call to just book it towards A. It's better to just. It's better to reset and put these guys on the back foot. Watch out, though. One enemy remaining. He was also there, he was also there. Watch out. Spike wings. Out of charge. Let's go. Dizzy has targets. Wait, wait, don't pick, don't pick. Oh, right. My god, how many 4Ks can you get? <laughs> the next round, we get absolutely stumped. They make a good switch by putting a jet op towards his A side, while the Reyna has an absolutely crazy round. 
The next round, since they got an up and they're getting confident fighting these different lanes, we decide to go back towards a fast B hit. I don't really do much, but my raise is a monster and gets an absolutely huge 4k. I'm breaking the door. Rina's, Rina's at the top. I think KJ broke the door. Oh, hell. One enemy remaining. Ooh, get your... Nice. That's funny. Turn the 4k club, dude. Oh, uh, what happened there? Did you, like, possess me with your spirit, Reyna? So, to close it out, I'm hoping I can work this A side of the map, because I still think it's a major weak point for these guys. They have kit. They have kill you know. Oh, man, we need them smokes, man. Oh, we're going they have killjoy on C this time. Two door. The second this jet makes his presence known, since we're down in a 3v5, I want to do everything in my power to try to look for a pick with this guy. After getting the jet, I probe a little bit more and I catch the KJ off too, and just like that, we're in a 3v3. They anticipated an A hit and had two guys silently stacking and we ended up getting shredded. Oh, two two side, two side. But we lucked out big time because our omen is him and gets a nasty 1v3 clutch. Spoiler alert, but after he gets the first guy, he has his ultimate, so he fully resets towards the opposite bomb site. After planting the spike, not only does he have the element of surprise on his side, because he can be anywhere, but the enemy team are against the clock and him, so they've got to be nervous. He plays it amazingly and clutches up for the dub. Shout out to this guy. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is today's code word for a chance of free coaching.